Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Donna. Today is December 12th, 2015. The Lord has put it upon my heart to make a video regarding His true birthday and when we should be actually celebrating. The Lord has titled this video, Remember Your Creator. This upcoming holiday season is not about our Creator, it's not about Yeshua HaMashiach. It is far from the truth. Satan of this world has deceived many, many people throughout the centuries. I pray that each and every person who hears this message has the spiritual eyes and ears to hear in Jesus' holy name. And I bind all demonic entities that try to hinder this message and for people to hear the truth. And I bind you, Satan, and I have that authority which is given on to me, Luke 10, 19, 20. You will send a command to the generals, the generals to the earthly dominion. Each and every person who hears this message, their spiritual, spiritual eyes and ears will be open. And I bind the demonic, all demonic entities you will line up in order of rank I remove your crowns you will not split divide you will not fragment you will not clone you will not pass your duties on to others you will not multiply you will not attach to anyone all demonic entities of this, this um, delay I rebuke in each and every one, and I cast you out, Mark 16, 17, 18. So Satan sent a command to the generals, generals to the earthly dominions, and I rebuke each and every demonic entity. You will go to the pit for judgment day. I claim it now. It's done in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' holy name, I lift your name on high. I give you all the glory, all my praise, all my love, all my devotion to the one true God, the great I Am, Father Abba, and Yeshua HaMashiach. All glory to the King. Father, in Mark 7, verse 20, 34, let their ears be open and convict them of their sin and draw them into the kingdom. John 6, 44. I praise your holy name, Father, and I thank you for the words. As I ask the Holy Spirit to increase as I decrease, and that this message will go out without without stumble, without distraction, without error. I claim it now, and it's done in Jesus' holy name. Okay, in ancient history, in Rome, they held a festival on that day. December 22nd is called Saturnalia. The priests believe the sun represented their god. But throughout the symbolisms, that god represents Osiris. And Osiris is the Antichrist, who is Satan, or as the elites of this world, who they worship, the secret society. They have this oath and myth that they follow this legendary story of Hiram Habit. I will show that the symbolisms, briefly, I'm not going to go into a lot, just briefly, about the winter solstice and how this festival took place in Rome. And they choose to keep it this um, a festival to honor Christ when it had nothing to do with Christ. Okay. Also, our holidays have become a pagan holiday, pagan to materialism, to idols. We need to have the best of the best. It no longer represented, even if you were deceived, it no longer represented family, love, coming together, and praising, and 
at that time. We were celebrating his birth. We didn't give thanks anymore. We didn't acknowledge the Creator. And that's why the Lord's saying, remember your Creator. As this holiday will go forth, many people, if you are choosing to come together as a family, go into remembrance of the Creator. Give what you have in, to the poor who need it, who are less fortunate than we. Let's give praise to the King for what we do have. We have our health. We have our limbs. We can walk. We are, we are victory in Jesus, where for the body of Christ, for we are no longer sick or under a curse or we're dead. Let's give praise to the King. Let's give praise to the King for his sacrifice. Let's praise him for his life. Let's praise him for his birth. And let's praise him for his death. And let's praise him for his resurrection. I give all the glory to the Most High God, Yeshua HaMashiach, who came from the throne to save his children who were dead, who were going to be cast into the lake of fire if God did not have mercy on us, that he sent his son to save us. And I glorify your name and I thank you. The elites of this world in this secret society, the legendary story of Hiram Habib or Osiris, they follow this legend. They take secret oaths. They denounce Christ. They worship the fallen one. Hiram Abid, in their legendary story, who was murdered and died and was resurrected from the dead, was December 22nd, resurrected three days later on the 25th. This is the myth, this is the story that they worship. They mimic everything that the Creator does. But their spirit is upside down. And everything they do is of darkness. As it states in scripture, everything in the dark will always come to light. And I thank you, Yeshua, the revealer of all secrets. This date and this myth has a lot to do also with the connection of the equinox and this is what they worship and this is what they passed along through history over 2,000 years now and God is angry that we not knowing the scripture and ask for spiritual wisdom and knowledge to see the truth and to put the pieces of the puzzle together this is not my finding I do not take credit for any of this information I'm only only trying to mirror an anointed man that God has given all this knowledge to these two dates December 22nd and March 21st which are called the equinox these two dates out of the year are the same amount of hours in a day 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours in nighttime this represents on this it represents the fusion of night and day the opposite day and night and human and divine coming together they were fused with the Antichrist in this case would represent the keystone which is the ark it's called um, the royal arch the center point of this keystone is called the winter solstice winter solstice falls on December 22nd 
This is also coincides with the, the story of Hiram Habib. This information, you can most likely find a lot of this information. You can go on the web or Dan Books Brown, The Lost Symbols. Many um, people associated with the Secret Society has uh, revealed this information. So I'm only going to take pieces, but I did make a video a year ago on December 25th. It was published on Christmas Day, and it was called The Broken Covenant. I really don't want to go into it, um, into the paganism and where the symbols go, because this is about my Christ, my Creator. Who I love and I'd rather give him the glory than to focus on the darkness and the wannabe God Satan okay like I said this this is also connected with these dates is the the festival these festivals was held on the 22nd just like the Hyrubid myth the story of the man who had this knowledge and and they killed him for it was they want to have that knowledge just like Adam and Eve wanted that knowledge and they ate from the tree of the forbidden fruit. Okay, so that date, like I said, is December 22nd and it's called Saturnalia. The priests believed that the sun represented their god Osiris. So that's why I like to indicate Hiram, Osiris, and it's Satan, the fallen angel. Okay, and their God, who was murdered by three pillars of the community. This is the story about Hiram, Abid, and Osiris. It's the same scenario, the same story, okay? Who was murdered by the three pillars of the community or three months of autumn because the th three months, September, October, September, October, November, and then December. That's the autumn. It's all about symbolism. It's all about dates. It's all about numerology and fusion between the humans and the fallen angels. Okay, so the three pillars represents the three autumn, you know, three months for in autumn. So the death occurred on the 22nd of you know, the winter solstice or the resurrection and the resurrection of Osiris the sun oh Hiram Obed all Satan on the 25th so to me the 25th represents the fallen deity you could see that we are not celebrating a a birth of Jesus Christ our Savior we have been deceived to believe that Jesus was born in December but in actuality it is the resurrection of Satan who has deceived many I will give you clues regarding Jesus birth and it begins in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse um, 1 through um, actually the whole chapter 12 and um, Chapter 12, verse 17 gives you the signs of the heavens, too, because I will point to some of the signs. Um, so these, are, I'm going to give you pieces of the puzzle, and then I will um, put some articles that I found even a year ago, even more new articles. I will link at the end of this video. The Bible is full of clues that hides the truth from, from the deceiver of this world. When he wrote the, when the great I am, the Holy Spirit, when he had his disciples, and as they wrote the Holy Scripture, he, he did it in codes, in clues, to hide it from the deceiver. Just as Satan was deceived when he killed an innocent man, Jesus, our Savior, that's how Christ defeated him. Because he was innocent and is cursed as anyone who kills an innocent man. So Satan knew he could not tempt Jesus. So he, 
he killed him and that's how he lost the kingdom and Christ took the keys back to the earth and gave us the authority back over to his children and reconnected us back to the Father. Okay, so the first clue in Jesus, Jesus is called the Lamb of God who comes from his word. In Exodus 12 verse 5 speaks of the Lamb without blemish, a male of the first year. The second clue is in Luke 2 is the season. Jerusalem gets very cold in winter. The shepherds would would tend to their sheep between spring to fall. That is when the shepherds kept watch over the flock by night to watch over the birth of the lambs. The birth of the lambs is at a certain time period also. There's two time periods, late winter and early spring. And God being perfect, he had his shepherd that watch over the birth of the Lamb Jesus. The third clue is the town and the timing of Christ's birth. The town of Bethlehem is the location and the building is where they held the lambs, their, that one year lamb without blemish for temple sacrifice is the dwelling place for the birth and death of lambs. That is the exact same place and time period when they sacrificed lambs. Jesus was born in this exact time period and in the building where the lambs gave birth or to be sacrificed for Passover. Jesus is known as the sacrificial lamb. Also, connecting to the building of where he was born. Remember, the temple, the symbolism on the temple, we are the temple of God and and his body is the temple and he was born in a place where they sacrificed lambs and where they were gave birth and he he was born in in they call a manger God his uh, miracles coincide also with the Jewish holy days the first actual Holy Day is Palm Sunday, <coughs> which in ancient history, in ancient history, um, the New Year was actually the month of the end of March, the beginning of April, which is Nissan, and is Palm Sunday. It's a holy day. That was the first actually holy day. Is Passover which is Nisan 1 which means the beginning and on the 10th month of the the 10th day on the 10th day of the month of Nisan the shepherds take the lamb into their house for four days prior to the sacrificial lamb in Hebrew, take means to accept or to receive the lamb. This is God's first commandment, was to accept his son, the lamb. You take into your house, you take it into your heart to receive him. And you can find that in Exodus 12, chapter 12, verses 3 and verse 6. Exodus says, take a lamb, male, a one-year-old without blemish for a sacrifice, which is the Passover lamb. Now with the numerology, with, um, with the number nine, if we count back from the Last Supper at the 10th of Nisan to the first day, you get nine days. Just like the conception to be, um, just like the conception to be completed, 
it takes nine months. Also, when God gave the command to the Israelites to build a tabernacle when they came out of the land of Egypt, they were told to, to make a temple, a, a tabernacle. And tabernacle means to dwell among us, that God would dwell among us. Which they started, and you can find when they start started to build this tabernacle is Exodus no I'm sorry yeah Exodus 19 chapter 1 on the third month so if you count nine months of completion of this tabernacle lands you right back on Nissan 1 and you can find this um, in Exodus 40, verse 2. And when it was finished, Exodus 39, verse 32. God is accurate and in order and never changes. Jesus' birth, his death, and resurrection all fall on Israel's holy days. It begins with Jesus' birth, his death, and resurrection all fall on the tabernacle from the beginning with tabernacles is the feast of Passover Nisan 1 Jesus died on Passover and rises on the Hebrew Holy Day on the feast of the first fruits just like when the tabernacle was done on the first fruits you, you'll see the symbolism if you go back and, and listen and if you look at this scripture ask for spiritual eyes to see and hear the symbolism between the nine this with the number uh, with the numbers I'm sorry with the numbers and uh, how God is very precise on his timing and how everything lines up with the holy days okay so like I said, Jesus died on Passover, rises on Hebrew Holy Day, the first fruits, which means a new life and resurrection on tabernacle is Passover, is Palm Sunday. It's be it begins with Nisan 1 with the Messiah on the cross at Passover, and it ends when God comes down on the tabernacles. The spring tabernacles is the beginning and it ends on the tabernacle it points back to Nisan 1 which means beginning if we count backwards from Palm Sunday 10 days of Nisan which is the resurrection to the fifth day of his death is Passover to the fifth day of the birth the beginning the Passover which brings us to Nisan 1 then we have a few days, but narrow it down. But it all basically points back to need someone. And like I said, regarding signs in the heaven in chapter uh, 12 in Revelation, signs in heaven, this is another sign. Another clue is the moon. Jesus died on a full moon, which means its fulfillment of his first coming and the hebrew calendar is based on the moon we know now that jesus birth is nisan one between march and april and dies on a full moon which leads us to the middle of the month the 14th or the 15th of nisan the new moon it starts and and it reaches its peak at the full moon which lands us right in the middle the middle of the month the 15 at its fullness is on Passover the signs of the stars the priest magi or the wise man he was also known as the astronomer was the man that comes to praise the Lord bringing gold and frankincense and myrrh Isaiah 60 verse 1 speaks to King Herod which we know that he reigned 
and had died in 4 BC. Before his death, he stated two years earlier, to keep watch for the signs in heaven, the stars from the east, in Matthew 2, chapter 2, verse 2. In Matthew chapter 2, 1, it states, and I want to, I'm going to read just a part of it because it's the part that kind of makes sense how it's not in the same year. It says, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, the days of Harold. Now to me, I'm perceiving this as Harold the king had died now after Jesus was born. And if I'm wrong, please seek the Lord for discernment. Um, another clue I was also led to is uh, verse on the same chapter, verse 7. And then Harold, Harold, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. So he's telling them to keep watch. He watch in the sky for the star that he made a decree to go out and to kill the lamb to kill Christ okay so he died in 4 BC two years later in 6 BC this priest magi saw the star in the sky and also hearing about the birth of a child the king of the Jews from the prophet Di, uh, Daniel, as he is known as the wise man of Persia. Daniel was known, Daniel had known of the birth of the king of the Jews. Magi, hearing of the word of the king of the Jews was born, had bring, who went to bring gifts and praise the new king. Another sign was with the planets. There was a conversion in one part of the sky with the planets, with Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, and Mars, was the sign of the king being born, and that was 6 BC in spring. It's all pointing to Nisan 1. The big clue, John 1 begins with the word, and the word is God. The word becomes flesh and dwelt among us, and we behold his glory. Just as the tabernacle that was built, that God gave him command to build the tabernacle, God used to come down and dwelt on the tabernacle, on the mercy seat. It's, just, it's the same symbolism. God dwelt among us. When God w was born and he came, he dwelt among us. When he went and resur resurrected and went and sit at the right hand of his father, he told the disciples to not go to do his work on the earth. Do not preach, do not cast out until the helper comes. And then the Holy Spirit is the helper who dwelt inside us. So that was another, another powerful example how he defeated Satan because if he didn't kill Jesus the Holy Spirit couldn't have come okay so in Luke it speaks about John his father who was a priest uh, Zacharias and his mother Elizabeth and the key here is when his father is due to minister. And we find the answer in Chronicles 24.10. Gives you the order of division. And when Zacharias was scheduled to minister and was called. To minister was called Abijah. And it tells you in First Chronicles 24 that it's the 8th order or the eighth week first chronicle speaks of the division of the 24 families divided into two lots the officials of sanctuary and the officials of the house of god now we know this his 
his time for Zacharias to minister was in the eighth week, or the eighth order of Abijah. In Luke 1, chapter 1, verse 14, it says, The archangel Gabriel came to came to Zacharias when he was at the altar, telling him his wife Elizabeth will have a child. You shall call you should name him John. And six months later is the conception of Jesus. Because that's the point we're we're looking at is that when we need to know when he was at the altar to get the exact month that Jesus was um, born. So six months later, Jesus was conceived. To get the answer to the time, the conception of Jesus lies in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The answer comes from the Dead Sea Scroll when an Arab shepherd had discovered the scrolls by throwing stones in a cave and smashing, um, smashing up pottery clay pots, which contained the scrolls is now the oldest Bible in the world. What perfect time when Israel is restoring as a nation and God is restoring his book. Perfect timing. Upon finding the Dead Sea Scroll, it contained a, a, a calendar that also has the priestly course. So this is a confirmation of the priestly course. And the key here is the Jewish calendar runs for seven years, and then it repeats the cycle of the order. So we needed to nail down the date when Zacharias was ministering to get the exact date of conception. The mystery calendar confirms that the priestly order was, it was when the sun displayed itself from the east and shines in the center of the sky from the base of the vault from evening to morning was the fourth day of the week known as son of Gamal from the first month and the first year do you remember I said ancient time the first year the first new year and the first month is the end of March beginning in April to so appointing back to Nisan which lands on the fourth day so now this lands on the fourth day of the equinox this is how the evil ones um, distort the truth about and how the fusion of, of men and win, uh, women fusing with this uh, the fallen angels the priestly order became began on Wednesday at equinox so this all leads back to the month of March because I had stated earlier that the equinox was March 21st and September 21st now there was only two times of the periods when lambs were born late winter and early spring so now this points right back again to the first new year Nissan won. So the priestly order began, like I said, on Wednesday at Equinox. Then the Dead Sea Scroll gives you a date. That matches one of the dates on the calendar. So both the scroll and the calendar dates match the time of conception. The Dead Sea Scroll was discovered the same year of the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD, which it confirms it was on a Sunday. Also, in ancient Hebrew writing, the tumult was confirmed the day when Zechariah's course of order, called the division of Abajai, has indicated his weekly order was the eighth. The quadrant calendar that was found with the Dead Sea Scroll and the scrolls, they both confirm the date of order. So we have two documents that was found. Perfect timing, Lord had, that the Jerusalem was being restored, his Bible was being restored. 
Now we have two confirmations from writings of the quantum calendar and the Dead Sea Scroll points to the to um, a date when Zachariah was ministering at the altar and when Gabriel came to him to inform him of Elizabeth would bear a child. From the calendar to the Dead Sea Scroll and the ancient writing, the quandrum, all three confirm the date when when Zacharias was ministering and the date of conception. Elizabeth conceived in the fourth day of the equinox on a Wednesday. That's why it's so important is this information here. Because John was conceived also in the beginning of the new year. So six months later, this would lead that the Blessed Mother was with child. Brings it to August, which lands on Nissan 1 is the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Makes it the end of March, beginning of April, Nissan 1. Between the, sorry, between the end of March, like I said, in early April, 6 B.C. Another piece of the puzzle is a symbolic meaning, and it starts with the book of John 1, when John speaks about the word becoming flesh. In Exodus 40, verse 1 and 2, means that the tabernacle is among us, means God dwelt within us. That we are the temple. When God made, gave Moses the commandment to build their tent, the tabernacle. When they left Mount Sinai to build this tabernacle or tent from start to finish, it took nine months. Just as it is for a woman to bear a child. Nine months to symbolism. The clues here is that when they finished the tabernacle, it was completed on the first month of Nisan. Nisan 1, the first day of the month of Nisan is springtime. Nisan means beginning new, just like spring brings, makes everything new, new beginnings. Jesus came and he made everything new new covenant and when you draw upon the lord he makes everything new he makes you renewed each time you call upon the lord and you draw in his presence jesus came and made everything that was old he has made now new the final proof of the messiah's birth was from the early writing from the priest hybris who states that Messiah was born on Nisan 1. This document is and has been in their lockup vault is at the Vatican. All the information regarding Jesus the Messiah was actually born is from the prominent rabbi also, who was an anointed man of the Lord. The Lord had given him the clues and I sought verification from his, his findings. I prayed and, and sought the Lord if all facts were true. As I also went through the scriptures. Not at the time when I first originally made the video. The Broken Covenant. I was still piecing it all together. But it, it's so clear now. That Jesus won is our sacrificial lamb. He was born on a holy day, the first holy day, holy new year. He died and resurrected Passover. He's our Passover lamb. He was born in the manger. He was born um, in, in the manger in the town where they sacrificed their, their, their lambs. I had sought the Lord for truth and I received the confirmation and the Lord wanted me to make this video and he wanted me to title it like I said remembering your creator God has left us puzzles within his holy word for his children to search for the clues and now we know that the Lord and our Savior was born on Nisan 1 which was between March and the end of March, beginning of April 6 BC. Since the Hebrews had Hebrew 
ha um, and standard calendars are different, just know that the birth is on Nissan 1 on a Jewish calendar. You can always look it up on the internet every year or this year and see when Nissan 1 is. So if we are in the process that you have your tree up and you got presents for the children, let's give remembrance to Christ and his true birthday, which is Nissan 1. Let's repent in being on Satan's territory and believe in a lie. Let's uh, give love. Let's, let's believe in the one true God. That he gave us this, he gave us the clues, and he gave many people wisdom and discernment to know the truth about December twenty fifth, which represents Satan. This is an abomination to the Lord, and Lord is angry about this holiday because his children have been deceived to believe that the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born in December. And which he was not. He was, it all points back to Nissan 1 between the end of March, beginning of April. Last year I had tried to warn people about this, but they didn't want to hear it um, because to them, they, don't, they didn't care what the symbolism, they didn't care um, what the deep meaning was in their hearts is that they were serving, they were worshiping God. You know, that was their day. I could recall when I was a kid, my mother used to say, say happy birthday to Jesus. That was the extent of the day. And opening up presents. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. And I have to say, last year when I made the video on the Broken Covenant and bringing all this information out, it was a long video. And I don't don't recall the ratings and first and the first thing and then the second thing is I was not good on speaking. I was petrified. So and probably it wasn't even clear enough. I probably tried to finish it up without thoroughly processing as speaking to get the point across. Like I stated last year, God dwells within us and we do feel his happiness and we feel his sadness. So, I had asked people, and this is something, um, how would you feel if you were standing before the Creator today? And he says, why were you celebrating Christmas when my servant told you it's not the true birthday? What are you going to say? Well, we know the truth. Like it says, the truth will set you free. Like Lord says, choose this day who you will serve. The Lord had given me a scripture last year. A couple of two scriptures I will give and I'll end with that. The message was it says message from God, Ecclesiastic chapter five one. Walk prudently when you go to the house of God and draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools for they do not know that they do evil so the Lord is saying he was not pleased and it we're doing evil in his sight now that we know then it, now it's a sin so if we don't know it's a sin he has mercy on that I believe I could be wrong but it's still in his eyes it's not pleasing he also gave me, he gave me Timothy 4, 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Okay, so we can see the perfect timing of Christ. The perfect sacrifice, the perfect place. The writings, the scriptures that points to the time when, time of conception, with the Dead Sea Scrolls, the calendar, and the ancient writing. They all confirmed it was all in Nisan 1, his birth. Let's give praise to the king. Let's repent on December 25th. 
Let's worship his true birthday. And let's break off the ties of the devil. Because even though we hear it, sometimes we don't want to receive it. And I'm not trying to say that we are evil when we still don't break a tradition. Please don't uh, uh, misunderstand. What I'm trying to say is um, let's not give room to the devil. Let's not give him the glory. He doesn't deserve the glory. He's made everyone miserable and, and put God's children in bondage for years. So let's not give this thing any recognition more than what he has done throughout this history, throughout years and centuries. So let's give praise to the king, Yeshua HaMashiach, whose true birthday is Nisan 1, the end of March, beginning of, of April. God bless you, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please seek the Lord for discernment and seek the scriptures to back up how God started right from Exodus. He started telling us he was the sacrificial lamb, and that was the clue to state. It was in Nisan 1. I give praise to the king. Thank you, my revealer and my savior. God bless you all, and I hope you enjoyed this video.